It is Pong Hockey, the post-game show. Happy New Year's Eve, everybody. Eagles lost and kicked themselves damn prior to the fifth seed. So, uh, uh, excuse us, we're not, uh, we don't have a glass of champagne uh, in front of you here. So let's bring in the man who covered this game for Jacob Media uh, and the uh, Pong Hockey Eagles post-game show. His name is John McMullen. And John, it's hard for me to ask you a question at this point because my only question <laughs> for the question would be, WTF has happened to this team? That's the question. Well, it's general enough. Yeah, I mean, today it was just a pathetic defensive performance. I would say that. Uh, you know, especially they didn't at the Arizona Cardinals, guys. The Arizona Cardinals, Mike Missinality, did not punt in this game. I mean, they moved the football at will. They ran the football. Uh, over 200 y- yards, James Conner was just dominating, devastating, 449 yards total for what has been one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Time of possession, 39-39 to 20-21, Cardinals advantage. They come back from a 15-point half de- halftime deficit on the road, and oh, by the way, I just got up from seeing Devontae Smith on crutches with a walking boot on his right leg. Avante Maddox walking back from the x-ray room. Um, this is a devastating loss for the Philadelphia Eagles in, in more than in more ways than one. But number one, I would state they gotta be, they they have to be a little bit shell-shocked from this game because. They got their hats handed to them. And it really, if Arizona doesn't make the big mistake on the pick six, if they finish some drives in the first half, we wouldn't even be talking about this as a collapse. We would talking, we'd be talking about this as a, a dominating performance by the Arizona Cardinals on the road against the Philadelphia Eagles. Just a bad, bad loss. No way to frame it any other way. I thought you just said, I just thought you said Embarazona, <laughs> which would have been a stroke of genius. Yeah. That's what it feels like. But you said if Arizona. I'm sorry. Farsi, go ahead. Yeah, put that on the back of the Daily News, I guess. Uh, yeah, I might what, steal what, that. What, what was said after the game, John, as far as Nick Sirianni? There looked to be a lot of on the field confusion between Brian Johnson and the personnel on the field right before what was their final. I guess uh, second to last uh, offensive possession before their you know hail mary attempt. Well, well it I mean, seemed like there was second, a lot going on there. Yeah, the second to law, last offensive possession. Remember, the last one was desperation mode. Yeah. So really, after recovering the onside kick, kind of a brilliant move actually by Jonathan Gannett because you know for all the talk about Arizona and I said all the good things, you know they probably weren't going to stop the Eagles' offense. The Eagles offense moved the football pretty well when they had the football. They just never had the football. Um, and and then they get the onside kick, and you figure, well, they'll score quickly, and Arizona might have a chance to tie, maybe try to win it with a two-point conversion, steal a win that way. I think that was the mindset. In fact, I know that was the mindset of Jonathan Gannon. Um, and they just went into sort of conservative mode, now, granted, the Jordan Mailata, um, they got a first down. Then there was a Jordan Mailata holding penalty, which really set them back at first and 20. And then they went Jalen Hurts run, Jalen Hurts run, Kenny Gainwell bubble screen, which, by the way, they have the playmaker, Devontae Smith, blocking for the role player. And that's where Devontae got hurt on that damn bubble screen that nobody likes, nobody wants mm. to see. After they, they burned a timeout, it. by the way. Sorry to interject, yeah. but after they also burned a timeout. Yeah. Exactly. So catastrophic play. Um, Jake Elliott, as steady as can be, still comes through with the field goal. And then the defense falls apart. I'll say this about the defense. They keep rolling out all these different personnel packages, and I'm surprised they don't have more problems. So I'll give them, the, the one thing I'll give them credit for is they don't have any penalties. But my my God, just pick something. And maybe somebody gets a little bit more comfortable and you start playing bubble, uh, better football. We got 
We got small dime. We got big dime. We got big nickel. We got Nolan Smith playing Mike linebacker. We got two linebackers. We got three safeties. We got four corners. They're all over the place. And you wonder why you have no consistency. Uh, this is week, I believe, week 17 of an 18-week season. Pick something. I, I don't get this defense to save my life. Yeah, they can't even pick the play caller, John. How we expect how did we expect him to pick the play? Yeah, and we see what that matters. So, all right, what that tells me is you had no confidence in Sean Desai. Because I said, you know, the improvement over the final weeks of the season should have been baked in. And it was with Seattle and the Giants. It wasn't even baked in with the Cardinals. They had 449 yards. They had 221 rushing yards. I I I don't know what they're trying to accomplish, you know, even even from the simple matter of, of Ricks, rotating Ricks and Ringo. Why? Who's better? All right, Ringo. You understand Darius Slay. Yeah, Ringo is better. Just play him. Just play him. Mm -hmm. I said Avante Maddox is there. I don't know. Maybe they had him on a pitch count because of the injuries and maybe he's hurt again and maybe that's the right thing to do. Um, you know, Sidney Brown had the nice pick six, which got to show up as athleticism. But these constant moving parts, I do not think is helping this defense. It is a massive misplay by the Eagles to make this change. You talk about the confidence in Sean Desai. This was the worst move that you can make because now you've got Matt Patricia playing mad scientists, trying to come up with all these different defenses and whatnot, confusing the hell. It's already bad enough. You got all these, you're, you're way, way, way under talented at linebacker. Okay. That's a major, major issue for you. But then you turn around and you're playing all these young guys in the secondary and you're throwing a full playbook at them, not a game plan like this, but a full, you know, playbook like this. It makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever, you know. And, John, we talked about it, you know, in the earlier segment. When players aren't sure what they're doing, okay, it's hard for them to play full speed. So then simplify what you do, you know. Simplify what you do so your players can play fast. The game is meant to be played fast. But when guys are trying to think while the play is going on, Defensively, you're always one step behind because the offense knows where it's going anyway. And if you're sitting there and you're thinking now you're two, three steps behind, you have no recourse whatsoever. You know, every single cornerback, John, and you know, I know you got to play some zone, but every single cornerback came up playing man to man coverage. Okay. In my opinion, it's the easiest coverage to play if you put them up in a in a in a aggressive stance, okay. You teach them how to play it. You take away the inside or the outside with the inside or the outside hand jam, and you just tell the guy to run with them. Just run with them. All this other stuff is just conjecture. You know, get over here to this landmark and then get your eyes back at the quarterback. But guess what? You don't know what the hell the, the routes are, you know? So if you don't learn how to drop to a landmark and then survey the area while peripherally seeing the quarterback, it doesn't make you a hill of beans difference. You might as well get man coverage and play more aggressive because what you've been doing all season long hasn't been working, okay? So if it hasn't yeah. been working, doesn't that mean that you should try some different things, do something different? Maybe you should blitz. Maybe you should run, come with a damn zero blitz. Come with it. Come with it. Speed up the quarterback clock and make him make the perfect throw and the perfect decision time after time but to continuously play off coverage and then complain that you can't get pressure is just pure stupidity. It's stupidity. I don't care how you cut it. It's stupidity. Yeah, I mean, I mean today I think the bigger issue was, was you know, the running game. And I, I don't know where that's gone. You, you're right, Seth. You talked about the lack of talent at the linebacker position. At one point, they had Ben Van Sumer and tagging in for Shaq Leonard. Now, Shaq hasn't been here for a long time. Um, James Conner, 
Matt Patricia talked about him this week. He's a really good back, but you know, that's the kind of thing you talk about with a bad team. They got, okay, they got a pretty good back. He's not, you know, he's not Adrian Peterson in his prime, but they made him look like that today. Um, and the question is why? Uh, we we talked a little bit about the rookie wall with Jalen Carter. We got a little bit of a sophomore wall with Jordan Davis because he seems to be wearing down. And when Jordan Davis isn't playing at a high level, that really affects the run support. Um, so that's part of it. Um, the coverage, I agree with you with young corners, especially uh, Seth, Kaylee Ringo, Eli Ricks, especially with those guys. Yeah, they're better in, in press coverage. And as you go along, you can teach them all these intricate zones and everybody and because, you know, Gannon was back, everybody was talking about Big Fangio again. Can we put that to rest? Big gave up 56 stinking points today. Can we put that to rest? Just find a defensive coordinator that can settle down this defense, pick the best players, and play them. Don't throw the kitchen sink every play. I got to play this. I got to play Mike with Nolan Smith. I got to bring Ben Van Sumer in, in there. I got to play Sydney, Sydney Brown at nickel corner. I got to play Sydney Brown at safety. Why? Pick the best players. Uh, all right, John. So let's come full circle here because, you know, we always look at, at where they are right now. This looks like a broken team to me. And it's, it, it's, it, they introduced that concept when they made that defensive coordinator change. So now that we see what they are, and it's really no surprise. The hopes for them to be in the playoffs, now it looks like they're going to be the fifth seed. They, this team looks like a first-round loser the way they are right now. Uh, am, I, am I right, or is this frustration talking? Well, I think it's a little bit of frustration. If they go to Tampa, for instance, are they going to lose that game? Well, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I mean, maybe, and that's where, you know, a couple of weeks ago I would have laughed at you if you said that, Mike, but now I can't laugh at you. I can say it's a possibility. But I wouldn't say it's a probability. Um, second round, you know, now they're probably going to have to go on the road to Dallas or Detroit, however it shakes out. Can they win that game on the road? I, I, I wouldn't well, like, they, I wouldn't they, like they them would, right now. They would go to San Francisco after that. Yeah, or San Francisco, you're right, number five. That, that's no what, way. If they're, they're the fifth yeah, seed. It would be Dallas, you're right. The second game would be against the Niners yeah, there. It would be, yeah, it would be Dallas, Detroit playing each other. So you're right. That's even less of a game. So anyway, it shakes out. Can they win on the road against one of those other good teams? I would say right now, probably not. Probably not. But I, I'm not going to go to that level that, they're going to lose on the road to Tampa if, if that's the situation. Or let me help. Um, let me help you go there, John. <laughs> well, I'm not saying they can't. They right, 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 right. Arizona. I, know, I know, but I'm not saying that they can't either. But they will. I promise you that. Okay, because you talked about this team, you know, being broke. You know, we talked about this team being flawed. This team has been whatever confidence this football team had. San Francisco snatched the soul out of this football team. They have not been right yeah. since that game, okay? And when you lose a game like that, it's incumbent upon the coaching staff to figure out how to snap you out and pull you out of it. You've had a coaching change. You've had, after the coach said it wasn't going to be any change, um, you got anonymous players that are making statements and, and saying things. you got blow-ups on the sideline. That's coaching. That's coaching. I don't care what anybody says. That is coaching. It's incumbent upon the, the coach and the coaching staff to be able to get that kind of stuff under control. And these are the problems that I have with the Eagles when they hire these, these coaches that go and bring their friends along that really might not necessarily be in a position or, be, or qualified for the job, okay? See, because if I'm looking at the linebackers, and, and and I'm and, and I'm looking at they're in a four man front. If they're in a a an over front, that means that they're shifted over to the to to the tackle to the tight end side. Okay. So as a linebacker, if the play comes to me, I know that I'm a C gap player right now. If the play goes away, 
I'm an A-gap to flow. If I'm backside, I'm A-gap to flow in the opposite direction. So please help me. Please help me understand why our linebackers look like they don't know where they fit. You get into a five-man front, okay? You got one linebacker on the field, okay? What? No matter where it is you decide to shade the nose, that linebacker is really only responsible for one gap because you're dropping the other safety down in the box. You're in a seven-man front. I don't give a damn if you got to go and put each guy in a gap. You get in the gap, you get in the gap, you get in the gap. Get in your gap and just stay there. You're going to tell me that these coaches can't coach a player as to where he's supposed to fit? What are you reading? You're not reading the, the offensive line. You're looking at the running back. That's why you're not sure where the hell you're supposed to fit. Look at the flow. Get to your gap. Flow two, get to your gap. Flow away, get to your gap. It's simple. It really is that simple. Okay? And then one of the safeties, whether it's strong or weak, they've got to drop in and take that cutback lane away. That's the way it normally works, okay? Football ain't that complicated. Don't The, the, you, the analytics have made everything overly complicated. It's not that complicated. So you're going to tell me that these guys can't figure that out? This team is fractured and broke because you got linebackers that are standing there frozen, not sure what they're looking at. And by the time they engage with somebody, they haven't moved one one yard off the spot that they started on. You start off four yards off the line of scrimmage, and you don't move. And then the offensive linemen are up in your face by the time you figure out what's going on. So, yeah, you can go to the stat line and see that, you know, Nicholas Moore made a whole bunch of damn tackles today, but he made them five, six, seven, eight yards down the damn field. How many did he make in the backfield? <clears throat> yeah. Well, because he's not yeah, being today, coached. He to be coached. And a lot of these players that they bring in, young players, don't develop because they don't have the type of coaches that can give them anything beyond X's and O's. Coaches, coaching goes way beyond just a game plan or the X's and O's. If you can't tell me how to get from point A to point B, as a coach, you are no service to me as a player. Well, it's, you know, make no mistake, if it continues going down this road, and this is a one-and-done team, we've already seen Jeffrey Lurie when the team does not meet expectations. We lived it. We just lived it with Doug Peterson. There will be scapegoats. There's already been one scapegoat, um, Sean Desai. There will be more scapegoats, probably on the defensive side, um, how we will start probably dictating to Nick Sirianni who the next coordinator will be. Then you might start the dysfunction of the, the head coach not being happy with that. And on we go down the same path that we've seen before. Hey, John, let me ask you a out. question. John, let me ask you a question. Why don't Howie just put a whistle on, bring his ass downstairs and coach his football <laughs> team itself? If you're going to you do know, all of that, Sometimes you don't do all of that. Why don't you just coach the damn team yourself? Well, and, and that's why I bring up the Fangio crap because it, it came up, and I get why it came up this week, but you also have the ESPN report, which was obviously Philadelphia tinted. I don't know who they were talking to, but I gotta tell you, I, I've talked to a bunch of Miami people, none of them heard any of this crap. They weren't looking for a new coordinator, so this spin of Oh, we agreed to terms, but he might have changed his mind to Josh McDaniels, the Eagles. All right, let's pretend that that would have happened. Who cares? The guy gave up 56 points. The problem is the personnel. And I don't care who you want. It could be Jim Johnson. It could be Bud Carson. It could be Buddy Ryan. Nobody's fixing this defense and making it a top-tier defense because the back seven is so weak from a personnel standpoint. But what you can do is stop the bleeding. And I don't think shuffling every deck chair you have is stopping the bleeding. I think you pick the best deck chair you have and you say, all right, maybe I got a, maybe I got a few games with this one it'll hold up instead of trying every rickety piece of furniture you have. That's what I see the problem is. Now, part of it is, look, Slay's out. You got to play the young corners. And that's where some of the optimism comes from. 
Slay's coming back. It's not going to be next week because there's no way they're going to put him on that MetLife uh, turf. But he's going to be back for the playoffs. We'll see if Bonte got hurt again. I don't know how serious it is. Hopefully he'll get better. Zach Cunningham was close to going this week. He'll be back. There's a chance to be a little bit better. But if you start saying, oh, I got to get Ringo and Rick some snaps, or I got to get Ben Brandt Sumerin in there, or I got to get Sidney Brown some snaps, it's probably and and good for Sidney with the pick six. And that was a phenomenal individual effort, showed off his athleticism. But he was only in that position because Reed got banged up. Uh, Colin Murray was trying to signal uh, to Higgins outside to to run a corner route. He didn't get it, and he ran inside, and Kyler just threw it up, so it was a easy interception. Um, yeah, it, it it was it was difficult. It really was difficult. Uh, John, yeah. just real quick, you you mentioned Devontae Smith was on crutches. Any? Any information on that? Does it seem like it's something that's going to be serious? I know they probably haven't given an MRI or anything like that, but what's the deal there? Uh, say that again, Mark. Sorry. Devontae Smith, you said, was on crutches. Is there any yes. reason to believe that this is a uh, very – Yeah, it did not look good. Um, he was on crutches in a walking boot. Um, I saw the, the actual play. He got hurt, if you guys – if everybody yeah. wants to rewatch the game later, he got hurt on that bubble screen late to Kenny Gainwell. You can see he was in some pretty significant pain. Yeah. I'm not going to say it's definitely – it ain't good. It's not well, well, here's the good news. Here's the good news. The the po the, uh, the, the off season's like uh, two games away. So there you go. I don't know if I can continue, <laughs> but we will on the Eagles' Pond Hockey Hockey game show. Caleb Santiago will join us next with the Diamond Debate. Don't go anywhere. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online.